Here's six things you better be doing if you're in sales. Stay tuned. What's up everybody, BC, welcome back to another video. If it's your first time visiting my channel, I welcome you to subscribe as you can catch up on all the other videos that I've done. I have a ton, and you can browse them and get some good stuff, okay? Uh, six things that I specifically wanted to cover in this video that you better be doing if you're in sales. Obviously, there's way more than this. These are just some that I feel are important that I wanted to highlight specifically in this video, okay? Number one, okay? Be the first one to leave a meeting and get up to go. Be the first one to end a call. Be the first one if you're going door to door to be the one to step away and leave, okay? Be first, be first. Now, why am I saying that? Well, it implies status, it implies high status. It implies you have other things to do. It implies that you're in control, typically, in the frame of the salesman and the customer, the customer thinks that they're calling the shots all the time and they feel like they're in control. And this is one of those things. So as we play this game and we want to uh, get this dynamic and put it in our favor, obviously, leaving first or being the first one, it also displays non-neediness. Demonstrating to them, because many of you, right, need to understand that you don't need the sale. You would like it, sure, but you don't need it. However, a lot of your actions are stating and communicating otherwise. So by leaving first and being the first one willing to walk away, because that's really what it boils down to, you're in control and you communicate positive and the right things versus the wrong things, which we tend to do sometimes, okay? So be the first one that's willing to walk away and demonstrate it, okay? That's number one. Number two is this. Aside from just meeting with a friend or you know a colleague or something like that, when you set up a meeting with somebody, right, to discuss a partnership, to, to discuss uh, them investing, right, let's say you're, you're gathering funds, whatever it is, if it's anything important at all, stop meeting people in coffee shops and places like that. Set a good place to meet. We've forgotten about that. You think someone's going to take you serious if you meet them at a Starbucks? I think people have gotten too deluded with that because it's cool to try to invite somebody out for coffee. Again, if it's friends or it's something small scale, no problem. However, if you're a business person, you're trying to sell something, you're trying to set up an important meeting, stop holding those meetings there, okay? It makes you look bad and it really says the wrong things about you and no one's really gonna take you that serious, okay? If someone's looking to gather up or you're looking for somebody to invest 50, $100,000, a million, or you're discussing something on a grand scale, Really, you're gonna meet somebody at a coffee shop or Starbucks? Come on, we have to step our game up, okay? Either get an office space, rent an office space. Uh, for those of you who are in real estate like myself, uh, my company EXP, they have the Regis system, which allows you to rent out specific office spaces and areas uh, all over the place, right? I'm in LA, I mean, you could be anywhere and they have a ton of locations. So that's something you can use to your advantage, okay? Up the venue, make it nice. That's two. Number three is drop the social norm stuff the social mask, fake, all that bullshit, okay? When you call somebody, you don't give a shit. Why are you asking them, how are you today? And the first thing that it screams to them is, oh, this is a salesman. And they're not gonna wanna talk to you. And immediately you get put into that box. Why? Because people judge you in seconds, sometimes in milliseconds, literally, especially if you're like me and you do some door-to-door -door action too. Right away, they're gonna size you up the moment they lock eyes on you. They're gonna make an assessment about you. You have earrings, you have tattoos, how you're dressed, how you walk, are you smiling, are you not smiling, okay? We see this a lot in corporate America, right, where you can't speak up for yourself and per my last email and all that crap, you know exactly what it is I'm talking about. All that robotic social norm stuff, stop. That's one way that you can stand out that's actually gonna make people pay attention to you. If anything, it's going to be like, whoa, okay, this person's different, that's immediately what they're gonna think. They may not say it, but they're gonna respond to you differently because you're not like every other robot out there, okay? Drop the social norm stuff, the social mass fake stuff, okay? That's number three. Number four, it's better to be over than underdressed. I still see this a lot. Now I'm somebody who's pretty dynamic with how I dress. However, if I'm doing business stuff, real estate stuff, on my, we can say, brick and mortar type uh, deal with my business, I always have a suit jacket on, good pants, good shoes ready to go. If I'm meeting with a lawyer, I'm dressing up to the T to the nines because I do not want to be underdressed for an occasion. You know who you're dealing with. You know who you're working with. You know what you need to do as an individual, okay? Because again, if I meet with that lawyer and I'm underdressed, he might not take me seriously and now that might be a deal breaker to them. All I'm giving you is an advantage here and a quick thing for you to put in your mind because 
You want everything in your favor. You don't want to give anybody an out to rule you out or not work with you or buy your product or service because of something so small like that that you can control because you decided to wear a shirt instead of throwing a jacket over it, right? Simple stuff that can be applicable to anybody that's still important. Very, very important, okay? And it's not that, oh, well, you know, I don't dress that way. It doesn't matter. In that setting, there's an expectation from the person, from the customer. So you need to honor that. And again, what does it take for you to throw on a jacket or dress a little bit better? If that equals more to your bottom line, you're going to do it, especially if you knew ahead of time that, hey, if I don't dress right, I'm going to lose 30 opportunities this year, which means I'm going to lose $100,000. Then it would become real to you and you would do it in a second, okay? So better to over than underdress. Number five, have a standard for your business and a practice that's set, meaning you have a set of rules and you have a level, a standard that you hold yourself to. As an example, if you're a business person, maybe in the mornings, that's when you prospect and make calls. Okay. And then you keep it that way. Just because somebody suddenly wants to meet you in the morning off a whim doesn't mean you drop everything and meet them in the morning. Now, again, extenuating circumstance, you have a celebrity client who's only there for one hour and they're going to be there Monday morning. Okay. You can make the exception. However, you have to have a standard that you hold yourself to. Getting respect from clients, honoring your schedule, right? Doing things a certain way. When you do that now, everybody and everyone, especially the customer, starts responding to you differently because the average business, the average person doesn't hold themselves to that standard. Now, this can be applicable outside of sales too, but you really need to get this one. A lot of newer people in business situations and in sales situations feel like they need to conform and not hold that standard because they're new. Mm. You're going to be treated like you're new if you don't because that's what new people do. They don't have that standard. They don't have that way, set way of running their business. You need to have it. You need to establish it. Now, how you define that is up to you. However, whatever you decide, you stick to it no matter what. And you will be tested. You will be tested, believe me, okay? Because I am on a daily basis. So have that standard and stick to it no matter what, okay? Last one. I would say talk less, ask more questions, just to keep it simple. Talk less, speak less, ask more questions, period. We find ourselves in sales explaining too much. You're talking, talking, talking too much. This is why I laugh when people who uh, label themselves as social butterflies. Oh, I'm going to get in sales. I'm going to kill it. No, you're going to talk yourself out of sales because you talk too much, dude. Okay. Listen more, ask more questions. 80, 20 rule as a rule of thumb. 80% of the time, let them speak. 20% of the time you speak, be selective with your words, ask more questions, ask better questions, gather information. We're not there to explain, 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 explain. Why? Because people will tune you out in a second. And again, the salesman who's a winner doesn't sit back and explain themselves. They say enough and that's it. We're not here to ramble on and ramble on and ramble on. Okay. And I see too many people doing that. And why does that happen? Because we get nervous as an example. One of the manifestations of nervousness is you start over explaining yourself and you start talking fast like this. Okay. Some of that's going to come from experience. However, you need to understand that when you catch yourself, stop yourself. Keep asking questions. If they ask you a question, answer it, fire a question back. He who is uh, holding the frame and is in control is the one who is asking the questions. That's classic sales. And we know that. Okay. Cause you're setting the parameters of the conversation. Why? Cause you're the one asking questions so you can take it where you want. That's why the person who is asking the questions is in control period. Okay. Let's summarize and then end the video. Number one, be the first one that's willing to walk away. First one to leave. First one to end the call. Number two, set meeting at nicer places, right? And do it to the level of what it is that you're selling or doing or a little bit higher. Okay. Number three, drop the social norm stuff. Number four, it's better to over than underdress. Number five, have a standard and practice for your business and how you run it. And number six, talk less, ask more questions, better questions. Okay. Cause then you hold the frame and you hold the control. All right. With that said, these are just a few things that I wanted to highlight in this video specifically. All of these things are things you need to keep in mind. And I don't care what level you're at. You can apply these things and definitely see results right away. Most of the stuff is very easy, simple shifts and technical stuff. Some of it's mindset, some of it's going to require more confidence. But again, as you gather more experience, you're going to be able to do this stuff at a higher level and it will become natural for you. Okay. So we'll end the video here. Thank you for watching. Again, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. My two new channels, the BC Show, Supreme Being Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to those. Number two, if you want to be a part of my team and you happen to be in real estate, 
real estate agent or anything affiliated with real estate, uh, go to partnerwithteambc.com and uh, sign up with us. That way you can be a part of my team and participate. And lastly, Modern Success, I do have a coaching program and thriving community now of a couple hundred people. Uh, we meet once a week. We have a lot of bonuses, private events, and that kind of stuff. If you're interested in finding out more or you would like to sign up, go to the link in my bio on Instagram or links below to briancasella.com. All right, that's it for this one. Peace. We'll see you on the next one.